Let's get Authentic plugged into Portainer so we can utilize our existing users and groups rather having to manage additional internal accounts when we already have users and groups in Authentic. Hey everyone, like I just mentioned, in this video we are going to set up Authentic with Portainer so we can log in with our existing users and groups rather than having to manage internal authentication and additional accounts when we can just utilize the ones we already have in Authentic. Now, I have just made a video, it's the Smo previous video that I have around self-hosting Authentic. So if you're keen on getting Authentic set up, go check out that video and it shows you how you can get it all set up using Docker, Docker Compose, all the documentations there. So go check that out if you're keen. This video, we are going to be linking Portana with Authentic. So if you're curious on how an IDP works, an identity provider, or OAuth more specifically within Portana works, I'm going to show you that in this video. And if, also, if you're keen on getting it all plugged in yourself, I'm going to go through all the steps. So feel free to follow along. So I think a good place to start is to show you just logging in via an internal account. And then I'm going to show you what happens when we use a configured OAuth account and what happens. So I'm just going to log into my local admin account here. So let's hit login. And you can see here where well, you can see all my environments that I have up and running. Now, if we come under the users tab, we can see we just have the one user. And then if we go under settings and then authentication, we can see that I have OAuth configured here. I'll make this a bit bigger for you. And if I just come down here, I'm going to explain this more in detail when we actually come to configuring this. But you can see here, what I'm saying is that within Authentic, I have a group called Portainer Admin. And what I'm telling Portainer to do is please make this group here within Authentic an admin. So assign admin rights to this groups. And that group is Portainer Admin. And you can see here in Authentic, I actually have that Portainer Admin group here. So if I click into this and then go users, you can see that I have two users here. I have TechDocs and my AKA admin account. So if I log in with any of these accounts, what's going to happen is I'm going to get access straight away into Portainer, but not just that, I'm going to get admin permissions because this group is being told, is getting specifically those admin permissions because I've told Portainer to give those permissions to that group. So this is fantastic for when you already have all your groups laid out in your authentic or your identity provider, you don't want to have to create additional stuff. What I can do here, I can create a group like for Portainer Admin, add our existing users we already have and people use day to day to this group, assign it to Portainer, done. I can tell, now tell people within the organization, hey, look, you're now a Portainer Admin. You can use your existing credentials you use on your day to day into Portainer and you're good to go. So I'm going to show you how this works. So again, you've seen before, I have those users that can log into Portainer and they will get admin rights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log out. And I'm going to log in with OAuth, okay? But what I'm going to do is in Authentic, I'm going to come to Users here, and I'm actually going to remove myself from this group. And I'm going to show you why in a, sp in a, in a second. So if I go and log in with OAuth, it's going to take me to Authentic, and I'm just going to log in with my admin account here. And I'll enter my password, and I'll hit Continue. And I'm just going to do my Authenticator, sign in. And what's going to happen is I've now logged in using that admin account, right? And I can see everything because that user lives in that Portainer admin group, which is being given Portainer admin permissions. So again, if I show you under authentication, what we're saying here is that there's a group called Portainer admin and assign in those admin rights. And that's our admin account here in Authentic. Now, what happens if I try log in with a user that's not part of this group that gets the admin rights? Well, I'll show you. So let's log out. Now let's try log in with... Uh, our TikToks user, which is my account, and I'll sign in. Now let's see what happens. So I can't see anything, right? So, you know, now I'm going to be like, hey, I should have access to Portainer. I'm going to hit up my team, and then my team's going to be like, oh, you don't live in that authentic Portainer admin group. Let's get you added to that, and you should have your access. So let's do a bit of a role play here. So we've got a user. They can't log in, and they should be able to access Portainer as well as have the admin rights. So what we're going to do is we'll go into the admin interface. We'll go into the directory, go into groups. Let's check our Portainer admin group and make sure that user's in there. We'll go to users. Okay, we can only see the one user. So this makes sense why that user can't see anything in there. So let's add the existing user. Let's find Nick and add. And we'll add. And now we'll let Nick know, hey, look, try logging to Portainer again. You should have your admin rights now. So again, Portainer and Authentic are talking together. And Portainer's going, okay, 
who's in that group who's in that portana admin group so next time we log in portana should now give the user tech docs those admin rights because he lives in those groups right so let's log out of tech docs so now we're logging into portana again but now we're going to use our tech docs user again and now since i'm part of that group we should get the admin rights here we go we're logging in bam there we go so now tech docs here you can see in the top right hand corner is able to see everything because that user is now an admin so if we come under on the left hand side here under users we can now see that aka admin well ak admin is an admin and tech docs is also an administrator and again why is this because under settings authentication we can see that one we've got automatic user provisioning ticked in portana i'm going to cover these in more detail when we're actually setting this up which means that when a user attempts to log in via the authentic provider that's already configured within portana that user will automatically be created in portana hence why tech docs user is now in portana as well as the ak admin we also have the team membership section set up as well and what this is allowing us to do is we're saying hey look there's a claim name which is groups so this is saying portana look at authentic under the claim name groups and under there there is a group called portana admin and play anyone in there gets admin rights we've ticked that and we could have more as well so we could have another mapping if we wanted there was more than one groups to have admin rights and we could also have more granular access as well so we could say we could have many teams in portana set up and we could just give them individual access so if i had teams set up we can just give different groups different access to certain teams in portana so we only wanted people you know we had a, a development team they only have access to dev we had the prod team they had access to prod so you can set all of that access up here as well. So I think that's enough talking. Let me show you how you can actually get Portana and Authentic configured. Now I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel here. So Authentic have great documentation for how to set up Authentic within Portana. So I'm just gonna go through the documentation they already have, but you know, sometimes it's just nice to watch someone go through just in case you've got any questions and I'll kind of explain what's going on during the whole process as well. So. On the left hand side we've got the authentic documentation on the right hand side we have my authentic where i'm going to set all of this up so you can see here under the preparation steps i've got some placeholders so portana.company is the domain name of portana wherever you've got portana running so mine is just portana.techdocs.nz and then authentic.company where you see those placeholders is the domain name for your authentic which is mine is just auth.techdocs.nz okay so don't actually use these values these are just placeholders for your actual values so you can see here step one is just going to authentic and in authentic under providers we're going to create an oauth to open id provider so let's go do that now so on the left hand side here we can come down and we can click applications and then providers so you can see i already have a provider for portana set up but i'm going to set up an additional one just for the case of this example and you can see i'm also using cloudflare as well i'm using authentic with cloudflare which is awesome so there's so many use cases for it so let's create a new provider and again it's said to use the oauth2 open id provider so we're going to click that and we'll hit next now we need to give it a name so I'm going to call this Portana example and the authentication flow. I'm just using the default authentication flow. So just click that one there that you have. And then authorization flow. I always use explicit consent. So I'm going to click on this one here and then the client type I'm going to leave as confidential. And you can see on the left hand side here, they're just giving you examples. So name Portana, but I'm just going to use Portana example for my one because I'm already using Portana on my other provider. And it's saying here, we want the client ID and the client secret. So make sure to note these two down that you're going to need those. And then you can see here the redirect URIs origins. And it's saying here to put in the URL of your Portana instance. What I do is I actually just leave this blank because what happens is it will automatically set this when you go to test it. So rather than specifically and putting it here, I just leave it blank. And then I know that when I go to test this, it will put the actual redirect URI in there for me. There's no harm in leaving that blank. And I'll show you that in a second. And then the rest we can leave. So we can now just click finish. So we now have our provider set up and you can see here it's saying hey look this provider has not been assigned to an application but that's fine now on the left hand side in the authentic documentation it's now saying we should now go to portana so let's go there so i'm in portana and i'm using my local ac account because at this point we don't have OAuth configured so i can't use those accounts but if we come down here and it's saying to go to settings and then authentication so settings 
authentication and then the select OAuth. So we're going to leave pretty much a lot of this default. Now you'll see that the automatic team membership is off. I'm going to show you how to configure that in a second once we've just got everything else configured. So it's also saying, you know, we select OAuth, come down and we just want to make sure that custom is also ticked and then we need to fill in some details. So under here, we can see our OAuth configuration. So here is where we need to put in that client ID and that client secret we had before. So I'm going to put in my ID. So I've just put in my ID and I've just put in my secret. Now you can see here, it gives you everything you need as well for on the site here. So authorization URL, you can see here, it's right here. And you need to change this authentic.company to the actual URL domain name of your authentic instance. So as you can see here, mine is auth.techdocs.nz. So anywhere it says authentic.company, swap that out for your actual domain name, okay? Or wherever, however you're hitting authentic. And then there's a rinse and repeat for the access token URL. So just copy the access token URL, paste it in here, making sure you're using the correct domain name as well as the resource URL. It's all been given to you here. So resource URL and then the redirect URL. Now that I'm fairly sure the slash at the end here is very important to make sure you have that. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure the redirect kind of has issues. So just make sure that that slash is there. The logon URL, again, you're just copying it, changing the authentic.company for your one. So user identifier. When I logged in before, you might have seen in the top right hand corner, this up here said tech docs, right? That was because I use the preferred username that's what will show up if you would rather your user's email address to show up instead replace preferred username with email and then their email address will show up instead and then the scopes here we just want to use email open id and profiles and there we go so we can now hit save settings and now let's go back to authentic and now you're seeing in authentic create an application which uses this provider okay so that's what we're going to do so we're going to open up here we're going to click applications just get rid of that so you can see a bit better. We're going to create an application and we'll give it a name. So in this one, I'm just going to call this Portainer Test because this is an additional one that I have, but feel free to call yours just Portainer. The slug is going to be called Portainer Test. I'm not going to worry about a group name. Now we're going to associate the provider. So Portainer Example is my one, but you'd probably just use Portainer. Let's hit Portainer Example. And then under UI Settings, if we come down here, which is the launch URL. The one is pretty straightforward. It's just portainer.techdocs.nz, right? And now what we can do is just hit create if you want as well. So when your app, your application will show up on your page for your user. So if you want to have like a cool icon, bit of a description around what's going on, you can add that. I'm just going to leave mine default and I'm going to hit create. And there we go. So now you can see how it's just got the P there. It doesn't have the image like my one does because I actually use an image on there. And now let's see what happens when we try to use our groups here. So if we actually click into the application where it says Portainer test, and then we go permissions, you can see that our admin actually has access to this to test. So let's give that a go now. So we'll make sure again, our settings are saved here. We can log out of our internal user now, and we can log in with OAuth. And it's saying here, redirecting to Portainer test. You're about to sign in into Portainer test. Application requires the following permissions, email address, and general profile information. That's fine. We'll hit continue. I'm going to log in and we have no permissions at all and that's fine because again what happened here is we just had automatic user provisioning on so when we logged in Portainer created us a user which is our AK admin but we didn't tell Portainer what permissions to give this user or you know anyone coming in via this OAuth how to handle that so Portainer just created us a user and that's it so let's tell Portainer how we want uh authentic users to be managed. So let's go and do that. So we're going to have to log into our internal user again. We can make this full screen now because we're finished with the documentation. So under the settings and authentication, what we can do is we can do automatic team membership. So you can see here, we already have the user provisioning. So coming under users, you can see that our admin account is here. So Portana made this account for us, but there were no permissions associated with it. You can see the role is just a general user. So if we come under settings and then under authentication, our OAuth, you can see here we had automatic user provisioning set up, hence why our user was set up. But what we want is we want some permissions here. We want to use the team membership function. So let's click this. And what we're going to need to put under the claim name is groups. So a claim name, there's like a set of scopes within OpenID and groups is the one we're going to use because under groups is the groups within authentic. So we're telling Portainer here, hey, look, look 
for the groups that we're going to be using, look under the scope groups. So we'll put groups in there. And now what's some cool things here that we can do is if we wanted to, we could actually go add team. And then if we had a dev team in authentic, we could put a dev here. And then we could map it to a team in Portainer. So that could also be called dev. And then that team could be mapped to certain permissions within Portainer, right? But for the sake of this one, what we're going to do is we're just going to say, hey, look, we're going to have a group and anyone in that group will just have admin rights. So you can see here, I had that Portainer admin group. So back in the authentic again, like I was showing you before, we had that Portainer admin group. Let's actually create a new one and we'll just call this admins and we'll hit create. So we created a new group and let's go into admins here. And let's add some users. Let's add an existing user. And we'll just add TikToks in this one and we'll hit add. So now if you remember, we actually deleted that TikToks user. TikToks doesn't exist in Portainer at the moment. So we'll come back to Portainer and we're going to tell Portainer we actually have a group within Authentic called admins. So we're going to put that in there there. And that's going to say anyone in that admin group, admins group within Authentic will get admin rights in Portainer. It's that easy. So all we need to do now is hit save. So we come back down here. We save our settings. Great. Right. So moment of truth. Let's test this. So we're going to log out. We're going to log in with OAuth. And then we've got the MFA, which is awesome. So we'll use that. Sign in. And now it's saying here, you're about to sign with Portana Test. So you can, this is proving that this is the first time logging in with this user, with this new application. We're going to hit continue. And TikToks has full admin rights. Why was that? Because Portainer knows that anyone in the admins group within Authentic gets admin permission. So if we come to users and we can see that TikToks is an administrator, AK admin is not part of that admins group. So they're just a general user. So that is setting up Authentic with Portainer as well as managing the automatic user provisioning and the group provisioning. So as soon as you log in, so your users within Authentic already get the access they need uh, with their existing accounts. You're not creating new additional accounts, you're just utilizing what you already have. Now I use Authentic in this example, but Portainer, as you've seen here, if I come back down to settings and authentication, You've got Microsoft, you've got Google, you've got GitHub, and then you've got LDAP, and then you've got Microsoft Active Directory. There's so many authentication methods you have here that you can use for Portainer. And again, under OAuth, you've got custom. So if you've got something that's not actually here, uh, again, I was using Authentic. Authentic's not specifically labeled here as a provider, but again, we just click custom and we just fill out the OAuth configuration settings and you can use it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this now makes sense how you can use Authentic as an identity provider for your services. So Portainer was a really good example here to use uh, to just, yeah, again, show you an example of how you utilize your IDP provider uh, with services. If you have any questions, feel free to jump into the Discord and ask there or ask in the YouTube comments below and I'm more than happy to help. But I appreciate all your support lately. It's been fantastic. If you've made it this far in the video, please subscribe, leave a like, Leave a comment how you got on um, and how you're using Portainer as well. It would be awesome to hear. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.